Right. Good job, copper. When it's flatter, I just don't want to go off like a hill. Yeah. look around at all. More spur, widen your hand, keep correcting her head, and just keep driving her forward. Because remember, you're in charge. If she looks around, she's going to take over. Yep, make her keep going. Don't be nice. If I fall behind, I'll let you know. Yep. That's better. When uh, you take over and you're going to make your horse lead, you have to become the leader. You can't be submissive up there. You can't be depending on the horse unless the horse is, you know very brave and knows what it's doing but when it's a follower type horse which I like like this guy's a follower you got to take over you got to widen your hands make them keep their heads straight drive them forward make them pay attention to you it's okay that Minnie's going crooked up there some of it's because of the ocean and my horse is fox trotting um, and I'm not holding my hands high it just always looks like that on the GoPro just so you know our hands always look weird like they're moving around a bunch it's just the GoPro so see he just looked look to the left and I corrected him by just squeezing on my right rein so you're trying to keep their heads straight you don't want to allow them to look for things especially if their head's getting higher if their head is getting higher you know they're getting more nervous so you want to half off on the rein, slide the bit a little bit, get their head back down and get them paying attention to you. Thank you. Just pointed out somebody dug a nice hole there. And, uh, so if you tend to be a follower and you want to try and lead the ride because you're gonna at times ride alone and you're trying to get practice, as soon as you start taking over you gotta be like like that uh you know when you're at work and you're doing team stuff and there's one leader that they take over and make everybody do stuff and you got to do whatever you got to do however much pressure you got to put on that horse to make it go see Minnie's kind of backing off now so you really got to get after him hit her with both legs hard but let's sit back in case she you know kicked out or did anything and then do it again yep and then more left leg left leg Yep, because then she's going to the left locker with the left leg. Yep, meaner, meaner, because you don't have your stick. Yep, no, so you just got to use those legs. Yep, keep after her and then clock. She was just trying to get him to go in front of her. So that's what horses do when they're not confident, and that's normal. They slowly start slowing down, and then they try to get the other horse. Like, you go first, I'm scared. Well, this guy is not, he's a good horse but he needs somebody who has some confidence and can push him because these neither of these two horses are lead horses so they're going to follow just fine but when one becomes the leader you're going to have to push that horse and that's the something that we that's not the horse's problem that's our problem we have to take over show them we're the leader that they can trust us and what we say is okay we're going to can catch up a little bit he has the nicest can and uh, you, you got to take over. Somebody's got to be a leader. So that's the way with the horses in the herd. There's always the leader. Now they might switch it up time to time. You might see other horses take over. But there's always somebody who's in control. And that one is always, if the word herd is doing well, is going to be calm, dominant, smart, brave. And that's what you need to become. So again, I can look around. You can't see my eyes doing it. But I can look all around but I don't want the horse looking all around. And at the beach, they always go sideways because of the waves and everything else that's going on. 
so that's not a big deal, but you keep your hands wide and you just keep blocking the horse, blocking the horse with your hands and your legs and driving them forward. That's the door you're opening, is the forward door. Lower your hands. Keep them wide, but keep them low so you still have contact. You don't want to throw her away. If they go up, they usually get too much rain. Yep, and then just keep after her. There we go, so see, she was trying to suck back and she got her going again, so that was a good job. So all of this just takes time. We are going to make mistakes. Sometimes your horse is gonna run backwards and not go because it's gonna be like, nope, don't believe you. That's just telling you, your horse says you need to get better. You need to get braver. You need to learn, take more lessons, learn what you're doing so I can trust in you and believe in you. And now she's still up. Look, I have to can her to catch up. That's a walking horse. This is not a walking horse. So she has a bigger stride. It doesn't look like she's moving, does it? But look, I'm cantering behind her. So that's what I'm going to do to catch up because we're working on something. So I don't want her to slow down and wait for me because she's working on becoming a leader with that horse. So. Again, when you get a horse, it's not going to be perfect. They know who you are in a minute. It takes you like a year to three years to figure out who your horse is and how you got to ride it and what you got to do to gate it. And that's the part of the relationship that should be fun. Okay? And then it's magic after that. It's not magic to start. If you think it's magic to start, you're on the wrong path. It's a journey. It's a hard journey. It's a disappointing journey. It's a fun journey. And with horse training, it's always up and down. You have good days, you have bad days, and you have horrible days, and then you have fantastic days. And it just goes back and forth. And then in time, it gets better and better and better, and you have more good days than bad days. But in the beginning, it might start with more bad days than good days. It's just the way it is, okay? But that's why this horse can get behind that horse. And it's not freaking out. If it was a lead horse, they usually want to take over. But see how she can go ahead of me? And he's like, oh, whatever, I'm getting tired. So, again, a great horse that can do that. Oops. But, there's going to be benefits of having a real brave lead horse and benefits of having a follower horse. A follower horses are better in groups. Lead horses are better if you're going to ride alone. They're not so great in groups. They have meltdowns when they're stuck in the back. And you just got to fix your horse. You got to work with it. So the followers, you got to make braver. Teach them your leader. They can take over and if they groups are fine. And the lead horses have to learn how to ride behind other horses. But if you have a follower and you always keep it behind and it needs to leave one day, guess what? It's going to be horrible because it's not used to doing that. So always practice switching up where you are in the trail ride. Don't do it in the beginning. Wait until the horses wear some energy off. And then that's when you start switching up. Okay? But the followers always put them in the back in the beginning and then the front later on once they're warmed up and they've worked off any nervous energy they have and then they understand where they are on the trail and then they'll be more likely to do it better, okay? Same with the brave lead horses, put them up in the front at the beginning and as they get tired, then start trying to put them in the back. And they are going to have meltdowns, temper tantrums, they might rear walk, crow hop because they're so pissed off to be in the back but the only way to fix it, make them do it. Again, you're the leader, you're paying the bills, just remember that. Okay, I want to say something else. So this horse trots when he's loose. The people who had him didn't know he was gated, so they were trotting and then he can trot, but I'm not going to let him anymore. I'm going to set his gate. So this is his fox trot. It has a nice smooth bounce to it. That's what it's supposed to feel like. It's, you have a slight bounce up and down, but if you try to post to it, it's very hard to post to. Okay? but you should have an up and down sensation. If it's step pacing, which also gives a soft bounce, it usually has a little bit more side to side motion as you're going up and down. So you just gotta feel. And, uh, oh, let's catch up. So, if I fall way behind, since this horse is trotty, and we're in the sand, 
those are two things that are making it trotty because that's where he actually is and then sand makes them trotty because it's deep and it separates their legs so great for pacey horses but bad for trotty horses so as i go through the sand and i'm trying to go faster with him but stay in gait i gotta bring his head up a little bit more and keep my weight back because that will help him stay out of the trot because i don't want to trot him anymore okay but any horse can gait well and any horse can gait really bad if you ride it wrong okay it has to have the talent to gait and some training you know but you can take a spectacular geared horse and ruin it by riding it incorrectly so you don't want to sit way back and bring the horse's head up if it's on the PC side or it's step pacing those horses you want to round out round their body get them to use their abdomen more in their back <laughs> she's leaving i forgot because i got concentrating but see he doesn't care but the trotty ones, especially when you're in footing, deep footing, rocks, mud, all those things, you got to keep their head up slightly. I don't want it sky high. I just want it where he's keeping his gait. Some horses that will be sky high. Okay? But when I know I'm falling behind, the other, and I can't catch up with his gait because he's slower than I'm going to can't hurt catch up, I'm not going to trot. So don't let your horse trot under saddle until its gates are set and it knows exactly what you want because otherwise it will choose that trot because it's easier, okay? You just keep cantering up to your friends and then work on your speeds when you're alone or you lead the trail ride and you control the speed. But with trotting horses, you got to get your weight back more. Pacey horses usually a little bit forward but you got to be careful as if it's pacing and trippy i'd rather sit back and pace than trip and fall okay let's try it again canner and this is good exercise bringing the energy up bringing it down bringing the energy up bringing it down but many of you just walk out there you never bring the energy up and then when the horse is full or the horse goes faster they all freak out because they're not used to it that's why you watch that video where i have the horses running around the arena getting used to loose horses and uh, get them used to it so they can tolerate the increased stress okay the only way you can teach a horse that is well one naturally they don't care but he's not caring so much that he's leaving Right? Yeah. Okay, we're heading back towards the uh, trailer. He's a big tire, so you see he's just on a loose rein. And now that he's good, I'm letting him look around. Good boy. He, so he's looking around. I just slid a bit, pushed him forward. Pretty easy. Yeah, it's very, it was. It was very weird. Pretty easy to. You just got to keep his head up a little bit. Trotty horses, that if they get rounder like that, when they go down, that's when they're going to go to the trot. So it's the opposite of what most people think. You just got to keep their head up a little bit. And this is just his fox trot. It's nice, not super fast. There's some dogs on the left right here. Hi. Thank you. Hello. Good boy. You're okay. Come on. Hi, puppy dog. Yeah, I love it. I was like, not everybody gets to ride in heaven, but we do. <laughs> We're riding in the clouds. And then they're showing blizzards, and I was like, I can only live there in the summer. Hi. Hi there. It's funny. It can be a little glorious. That's all right. I can't wait. Thank you.
Are you uh, are you just visiting or what are you doing? I just came down to get out of the heat. Oh, oh nice awesome. It's so good to see you. This is Marissa oh, on Minnie. Nice That's to meet you. Susan. Nice to meet you. Yes, yeah, she Karen owns Gator. I just rode Gator yesterday. Oh, did you really? He was good. Oh, I'm so glad you stopped. That was awesome. All right, sounds good. Hi. Get to get out of the heat, she said. Yeah. yeah. I was just here three weeks ago, and I had someone looking at it, and then convince him. He wasn't gonna do it. Why wasn't he gonna do it? I'm doing fine. Swedish bridge. Yeah. There's a bike coming up behind us. Oh, you can go. Hi. And uh, good job, buddy. So, but yeah, that was a whole story. And I was like, that's the things I don't get. What he's gonna do? Yeah, he did great. He did really good today. Oh, there's three. Yeah. But yeah, Tilly's so funny. I was like, she's a, you know, she's a good tester. Because if they're stupid, she'll get them. Because <laughs> I've had some, I'm like, no, just don't. And they just keep going. I'm like, she's pinning her ears. And finally, she just spins around and kicks them. And I go, oh. There you go. Now see, he's looking. This is all normal, but you want to shorten up, take control in case the person comes flying out the door. Yeah, so overall it went well because it was cool out at nighttime. You know, we leave the back doors open. Like, so you like where the mission and stuff is. And oh, we did go to Mission Bay. Bay. 